Shalom, everybody. Um, I am back on again. Um, I was traveling for the last week, so I um, missed, you know, last week's session. But um, hey, welcome. I'm going to be bring, bringing a word of encouragement um, about this season of waiting that we all are in. Um, you know, it's been like six months of of waiting, but really six months of preparation, six months of ref- refinement, six months of um, focusing, six months of um, dreaming, you know, six months really to get us prepared for this next season. So it seems like it's been a long time and it seems like things haven't really happened or it seems like a lot of us have made efforts to move um, ourselves forward, whether that's through businesses or, you know, personally or, um, or in terms of just projects and things like this. And it may seem like things haven't moved forward, but in reality, um, God has been working behind the scenes in a tremendous, tremendous way. And, um, he just wanted me to encourage everybody with this message concerning the timing of the season and how he wants us to really cling on to our faith, cling on to our hope and trust in him, and um, not lose our not lose our trust and not back uh, away from the promises that he gave us, you know, months months ago or weeks ago. And um, he just wanted me to really remind everybody that he is faithful. Hey, welcome. And so um, I'm going to be. Yeah, just talking about bread, he gave me uh, an interesting image of bread and um, baking. So for those that like baking or those that know how to make bread, I hope that this is uh, clear and concise for you um, and relatable for you. But if not, then I'm going to be just talking a little bit about um, the process of making bread. I've only made bread maybe once or twice, and it wasn't, you know, the proper way. Um, but you know, I got the gist of it. And so for the sake of this talk, um, I will bring in, you know, my experience with bread making. So praise God. And I had water somewhere, but I, I seem to have misplaced it. So I'll be swallowing my saliva and, um, I'm going to begin with a prayer. So thank you everybody that got on and those that will get on. Um, thank you for everybody that's made it already through this three minute introduction. Um, God loves you really and God has chosen you and if you are curious about him then um, please 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 seek him with your entire heart. Hey Misa! Good to see your icon and your name. Uh, it's been you know, years, 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 years but um, I'm just recalling a conversation that we had back on Cooper Street you know, in Brooklyn years and years ago. But um, I hope you're well. I hope Sarah's well. I hope your mother's well, your brother's well. I hope everybody's well. Um, I hope you guys are all safe. I, I love you, just know that. And um, I-, I pray that that you're healthy and that um, you're prospering in, in every way. So um, I'm gonna begin with a prayer. I'm gonna pray actually for you, Misa, and uh, your family, and then I'm gonna open up with this message. We say hi, and we hope you are so good. I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) Amen. So Lord, I just, um, I first just want to lift up um, Misa, God, and Sarah to you, Lord, my my friends. From a different season, Lord, I thank you, God, for everything that they poured into my life, Lord, the way that we just laughed and conversed and had so many incredible memories back in, um, in New York. Lord, I pray, Father, that you would just bless them, that you would meet them, that you would encounter them in a way that is undeniable, God. I pray, Father, for the unity of their family, God. Unite um, every single member. Unite them to their mother. Unite um, their brother, Lord. I pray that you would build them up and strengthen them, fortify them as a family, God. This is uh, a time when family is so, 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 so important, Lord. And I just pray, God, that you would just give them space to have uh, more conversations, honest conversations, uh, hard conversations that, um, that 
that bring healing, that bring love, that bring just unity um, all around, Lord. And so, Father, I pray, God, that you would break down every single wall um, in uh, and let that there would be no division, that there would be no separation between them, Lord. I thank you, God, that you love them, that you care for them, Lord, that um, you delight in them, Father. And I pray, God, that you would just show both Misa and Sarah visions of their future, visions of the calling that you have for them, visions of the way that you want to use their creativity, the way that you want to use the creativity that you gave them, Lord, and um, the platforms, God, that you want them to to be lights on and to um, to spearhead, God, I just thank you for oh man, just their 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 genius and um, their intellect, their their aesthetic sensibility, everything, God, and I just pray, Father, that um, that the roadmap for them would be made absolutely clear. Um, in Jesus' name, I pray, Amen, Amen. Okay, and now I'm gonna pray uh, for the message. So thank you for for being on. Lord, I pray, God, for this word that is about to go forth, God. I thank you um, just for everybody that's on, everybody that will get on. Lord, I thank you for um, your timing, your perfect timing. I thank you, God, that we are not late, we are not early, but we are in alignment with your will because we have sought you, because we have um, rested in your presence, Lord. And I thank you, God, for working overtime. I thank you for um, just the the development of spaces, the development of people, the development of spouses, the development of relationships, God, that you have been taking care of that we can't see yet, but Lord, you are preparing them for us so that when the timing is perfect, when the door opens, Lord, that there will be a meeting point that is uh, divine, Lord. So I thank you, God, for divine appointments. I thank you, God, that this is a season for divine appointments. This is a season for access. This is a season for breakthrough. This is a season for um, influence and, and authority and also autonomy. And so, Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ that every single heart that is listening to this message would be encouraged by um, your timing and by what your word says about your timing and um, that we would not uh, lose faith, that we would not lose hope, that we would not be discouraged, but that we would be encouraged and that we would be um, built up, Lord, in the waiting. And so, God, we just praise you in advance and we thank you and we love you in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. I pray. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Love you too. <laughs> thank you for being on. Um, okay. So I'm going to begin now from um, Matthew 6, verse 9 to 13. This is a kind of common, uh, not common, but very well-known verse that has been kind of co-opted by a lot of, you know, religious, religious people, um, structured, rigid people. Um, but it says, uh, in the words of Jesus, he says, this is how one should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we also, as we have been forgiven, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Okay, so um, as we know, this is like a, a prototype for the way that we should be praying, but for those that really know Christ, he doesn't want us to be repetitive. He doesn't want us to just say this prayer um, and expect that, that you know, our work as intercessors, our work as prayer warriors is over. He wants us to, of course, go deeper and to personalize all of our prayers. But really, he highlighted this to me. Excuse me, my nose is really itchy. Um, he, he, he highlighted this passage to me because he wanted me to focus on verse 11, which says, Give us today our daily bread. Okay. Give us today our daily bread. Like, what does that even mean? So he led me to John 6. Um, and this, for those that have heard, um, you know, that, that, that scripture talked about, this is, um, could be a recap or, or just a, um, uh, um, uh, what's the word? It could be, you know, this, this could be um, just a recap or this could be, um, oh my gosh, I'm losing the word. But anyway, for those that have been familiarized with Jesus as being the bread of life, it's always good to remember this. It's always good to 
rethink uh, and re-meditate on what this actually means. So in John 6, verse 30, it says, So they asked him, um, this is the you know people in the marketplace at the time, they asked Christ, he said, What sign then will you perform so that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus replied to them, saying, Truly, truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is for the bread of God is he who comes down from earth and gives life to the world. And they replied, saying, Sir, give us this bread at all times. And Jesus answered, I believe I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Right, so this is um, talking about uh, a spiritual hunger, right? Hey, welcome. Um, Daythag, QT3000, welcome. Good to see your icon again. <laughs> um, so Jesus is the bread of life, right? This is talking about a spiritual hunger. So we know that we are uh, tripart beings, right? Um, body, soul, and spirit. Uh, the spirit man um, needs food to thrive, to eat, to consume. Uh, our flesh needs physical food, but our spirit also needs food. Our spirit also needs drink. So a lot of people that are living in the world aren't aware necessarily of the fact that they are spiritually dry, that they're spiritually hungry, that they uh, that they don't even know that there is spiritual food to eat and to consume. And that's why a lot of the times when people, oh my gosh, my nose. Uh, that's, a, that's why a lot of the times when people, um, you know, get involved in new age practices and things, they find them so appealing. Or when somebody asks if they can do a tarot card reading for someone else, they get very excited because they're interested in uh, some type of spiritual encounter because it's something that they're not used to because they've been living in a spiritual drought. And so um, a lot of the times people can enter into practices that God doesn't um, approve of because of you know, spiritual parchedness, let's say. Um, but Jesus says that he is the bread of life and that whoever comes to him will never hunger and whoever believes in him will never thirst. And so um, what does that look like? What does that feel like? Um, a lot of the times, you know, when we, when we uh, as believers, we, we wake up, we go through our day, we, find, we can find that we're quite distant from God. We can find that, that our rhythm is off or we're not fully um, fully joy joyous we're not we're not elevated we're not lifted we're not high in the spirit let's say we're we're kind of oppressed or we're depressed or we're weighed down by the current events or we're weighed down by uh, something that somebody said to us last week or whenever and so we can become um, just spiritually bogged down uh, in the mornings or in the afternoons and and so God really wants us to take a uh, spiritual inventory. He wants us to ask ourselves, you know, how how are we doing? What is our what is our our fullness level, right, on the spiritual spectrum? Do we feel kind of uh, down? Do we feel, you know, and this is not just emotionally. This is like spiritually. Do we feel like our spirit man is excited about the things of God? Do we feel like our spirit is excited for the dreams that the Lord gave us to? Um, to manifest and to pursue? Do we feel um, excited and eager to uh, hear what the Lord is saying each day? Because the thing is, God speaks volumes every single day, but very few, unfortunately, um, take the time to really hear and comprehend and interpret what he's saying per day. Um, and so part of this scripture uh, in Matthew that says, give us this day our daily bread. It's talking about uh, the daily necessity that we as believers and as human beings have for spiritual food, right? So if Jesus Christ is the bread of life, uh, if he's, he, his presence, his voice, his teachings, um, his instruction, if all of that is food that we're to consume on a daily basis, um, we have to ask ourselves, are we eating that food? Are we getting to that food? And um, a lot of the times also people, 
people ju- people go to the word um, as uh, as routine, and it's always good to develop a practice. You know, read your you know read your Bible every day. Um, but I'm just going to be honest. For me, that can be very difficult, uh, and it can get very boring, and it can get very dry, and it's something that I've had to you know press beyond the flesh to do. And sometimes it looks like reading one chapter. Sometimes it looks like reading one verse. Um, but the thing is, is you know, this book is is the roadmap. It's the foundation of our faith. But it's really a tool to get us connected to the heart of Jesus. And so, a lot of the times, people will go to the Word and they won't encounter Christ as they're reading, or they won't be led by the Spirit while they're reading. And that's what produces a kind of dryness. And that's what produces, um, that, that, that's what fails to produce that, you know, living water or that thirst quenching, thirst satisfying, hunger satisfying um, experience that can only happen when you actually encounter the Spirit of God or when you actually encounter the presence of Jesus Christ. So um, God wanted me to just encourage everybody to, um, to pursue him in unconventional ways, to pursue him in new ways. So, you know, sometimes you can read the word and it can just be like meat and it can be revelatory. Other times it takes a little bit more work or it takes a different strategy. Sometimes I find that I have to listen to the word. Sometimes I have to listen like in an audio book, I have to listen to the word or I you know, will go to YouTube and I'll type in, you know, the book of John, Uh, And it'll just be read to me. And I love when that happens. And it's just a different experience. It's a different way that the word can wash over you. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you have to worship. Sometimes you have to, you know, read, read some of these texts. And instead of just reading them, you sing them, you know, sing them back to God. Um, Right. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. I don't know, um, you know, and then just kind of turn it into a chorus and allow it to, to uh, allow it to take different roots or allow it to um, resonate in your spirit in a different way that is less, less ritualistic, less routine, less sterile, and search for encountering Jesus through the way that you read your word and through the way that you consume, you know, his word and consume his instruction. So um, again, hallelujah. So again, you know, this, the scripture in Matthew, it says, give us today our, our daily bread. So we have to just be conscious, especially in this season, to make sure that we are um, satiating our hunger and our appetite spiritually um, on a daily basis. You know, really take an account of how you are today, of how you were yesterday, of how you were last week. You know, for those of us that have experienced spiritual highs, let's say, we are to maintain those, those, um, those, that status and that experience, you know, it's, it's, it's possible, right? He says, Jesus said, for anyone who's thirsty, come to me and drink. So are we going to him to drink? Are we, are we actively going to him to drink? Because it's not his responsibility, it's ours. Um, it's our responsibility. Amen. So, um, then again to the scripture, give us today our daily bread. So also the Lord wanted me to talk about um, physical things, physical provision. Uh, a lot of us are have been laid off, have been put out of work, are in this kind of waiting zone, waiting period, loading zone. And uh, there is space for people to get nervous. There's space for people to get anxious. There's space for people to doubt uh, whether or not they'll be able to pay their bills, you know, next month or in the next five months or six months or whatever. And so God um, wanted me to just talk about uh, his provision and how he's always a provider and he's always supplied the needs of his people and he doesn't let his people starve. He says um, never, never, uh, or, or that his children are never um, begging for bread, right? So in Matthew 7, he says, which of you, if, he, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Right, so this is Jesus talking to the disciples, saying, you know, who, who would give their own child a stone if they were hungry? You know, like if you, if you had a child, if you had a son, 
and your son was hungry and they were asking for food, would you give them a stone? Would you give them a rock or would you feed them, right? Or if he asks for a fish, we'll, we'll give them a snake, right? So if you want you know, fish, if you want salmon, if you want, hey, nothing but time, welcome. Um, if you want salmon, if you want you know, a scallop, whatever fits your appetite, will, will your father give you a snake? Um, you know, personally, I'm, I'm not interested in consuming snake. So, you know, I don't want a snake. I would prefer the fish. And so it, it continues to say, so if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Right. So God is in the business of giving good gifts to his children. Um, he loves to lavish good things on those who love him. And uh, for those of us that have been in this season of waiting, where it seems like we're waiting on the promise, we're waiting on the provision, we're waiting on the breakthrough, we're waiting on um, the relationship, we're waiting on whoever, um, God is saying in this season that he's just been preparing us and that he has always been good and he desires and will uh, fulfill the promises and give us the desires of our heart. And um, yay, hey, Tamora, awesome to see you on. And um, he will good. Uh, he will give good gifts to his children, and um, and so he doesn't want us to worry. And he continues to say that even before in Isaiah sixty five verse twenty four, he says, even before they call, I will answer, and while they are still speaking, I will hear. Oh, awesome! Hey, Candida, awesome! Thank you always for your seeds. I'm very very grateful. And um, I pray that the Lord blesses you so much financially and spiritually and in every single capacity. Um, you're an incredible woman. And, and so is Tamora, an incredible, powerful family of, of strong, strong women. So, um, so the Lord, in, 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 uh, as a visual, the Lord gave me uh, an image of, of a baker, um, a baker that was... I guess it wouldn't be a baker, but a, a pizza maker, actually. And so he showed me this image of, of, uh, um, of a man uh, with, you know, his two fists out, and he was kind of, you know, spinning this dough. You know, it was like the final stage of the pizza before it gets its toppings and before it's put into the pizza oven. And um, I was asking the Lord, okay, Lord, what is this? And he was leading me to uh, understand bread making and the process of making bread in general, right? So um, when you make bread, you, hey, just, just in the cut, welcome, hey, good to see you. Um, so when you make bread, you have to get um, dough, of course, sorry, you have to get dough, and the way that you produce dough is by combining, you know, warm water, and yeast, some salt, some sugar, and flour. And, um, you know, I'm not an expert bread maker. I've just watched a couple of videos recently. But what happens is you combine all the ingredients and you have to knead the dough. You have to process it. You have to um, combine all the ingredients and make sure that they sit well together and they're actually uh, no longer separated. And oftentimes, or, you know, with, with traditional bread making, the bread maker will uh, allow the dough to sit. So it has to sit um, so that the yeast can can remain active and it can actually grow and expand the dough. So, you know, they'll, they'll put it into a ball, they'll cover it with a cloth, they'll let it sit for 15 minutes, and then it will rise. Um, then they'll work it again and again, and they'll cover it again, and then they'll let it rise again. And then they'll work it again, work it again, knead it again, right, fold it in again, and then they'll cover it again and let it sit for up to like 24 hours. So a lot of the times uh, pizza makers, like professional pizza makers, will, um, <laughs> they will, um, they'll prepare the dough the day before they have to bake it, before they have to um, make the pizzas, right? So they'll use like day old dough, which isn't really old, it's just been prepared for the next morning. 
And so uh, as I was just receiving this revelation from the Lord, he was telling me that a lot of our promises, a lot of the things that he's spoken to us over the last six months during this pandemic, everything that he's been telling us he's going to do, he is going to do them, right? He's not a man that he should lie. He's going to do them. But just like the dough, they've been preparing. So he was saying, he was saying, tell the people that it takes time for the dough to rise. So there's some people that I know that have been waiting for like a house and they're, they're waiting for it to come onto the market. They're waiting for, um, for, you know, the perfect space. And God was saying that, that, you know, those, some houses are being renovated. Some houses are being restored. Some houses are getting new appliances. They're rising, right? Um, there's people that have been waiting for relationships and their spouse or their partner or whoever is not um, ready yet. They have to rise. They have to go through this process with the Lord where they're being needed and they're being folded and, and you know, pressed and massaged and, and, uh, and they're cultivating. And they are, um, and that, and they're rising. And even though we can't see them, the dough is rising. So, so um, God just wanted me to really encourage everybody, and say that a majority of the time is over. A majority of the waiting is over, and um, we're about to. We're about to have, you know, we're about to get the pizza. We're about to get um, the toppings put onto the pizza. You know, everything has been prepared for this moment, and a majority of the waiting time is is over. And so he wants us to just be uh, encouraged, and for our faith to be renewed, and for our trust really to be renewed and restored. Um, because a lot of the times, you know, we can get anxious in the waiting, and we can grow doubtful in God. And we can even grow doubt, doubtful in our ability to hear God, right? We can say, you know, Lord, maybe I heard you wrong. Maybe you didn't tell me that I was going to take on this project. Maybe you didn't tell me to um, move to this new area. Maybe you didn't tell me to pursue this person. And God is saying, don't doubt yourself and don't doubt your ability to hear me. He's saying, I, I spoke and there is a waiting period but the waiting period uh, is not does not mean denial, and it doesn't mean that you can't hear, and it doesn't mean that uh, I won't bring the promise to pass. And so, just going back again to this this passage um, in Isaiah, Isaiah sixty five, he says, "Even before they call, I will answer, and while they are speaking, I will hear." Right. So, even as we're praying for new things, even as we're seeking the Lord for new projects and new vision and and um and and new forms of ministry even he's saying that even before we call he will answer he will provide the answer so he's already in the process of making the dough for the next things that we're going to ask for right he's always a step ahead ahead he's always uh, been outside of time he knows the end from the beginning and so even as we pray and petition him for for new things you know he wants us to ask for new things he wants us to ask for increase he wants us to always be asking him um, for more of him and more of of his blessings and all of this and so he's saying that he he's already prepared them right there every every blessing that he has for us is already prepared and he wants us to come into alignment and pray and ask him for those things um, in faith knowing that knowing that they've been prepared, knowing that he's faithful to prepare, and knowing that um, he will bring them to us at the appointed time, at the perfect time, at the divine time, and to just not have any disbelief. Hey, Hotline Praying, welcome. Good to see you. And your icon with a um, face covering, very sanitary. <laughs> and um, so lastly, I just want to close with this uh, passage from Matthew 6 verse 25. It says, therefore, I tell you, and we really, as, as believers, as human beings, we need to get this scripture into our, our, our spirit, like daily, um, monthly, weekly, as often as possible. I've read this so many times, and it, it always, 
always, always encourages. This is Matthew 6, 25. It says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? <laughs> um, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which are here today and tomorrow are thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Hallelujah. So therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So God just wants us to cling to this scripture, just to seek first the kingdom of God with everything that we can, right? Pray and worship and just seek him for what he's doing in the earth. Um, it says that, that the pagans, right, people that worship money, people that worship um, fame, people that worship Instagram, people that worship themselves, they run after all of the things that were listed. They run after clothes. Yay! Hey, Justin. Awesome to see you. My brother. Um, good to see you. I hope you're well. They run after, you know, yes, yeah, the bigger picture. Context. Yeah, they run after uh, they run after clothing. They run after cars. They run after um, you know well uh, wealth. They run after all these things. And God says that He will add everything unto us and more, more than we could think or imagine, if we just seek Him. If we seek first His kingdom, and um, and what does that look like? You know, seeking the kingdom is seeking for God's will to be done in the earth. Seeking God's kingdom is seeking um, his, seeking uh, salvation for people that don't yet know him. Seeking his kingdom is seeking, um, allowing the Holy Spirit to manifest itself in front of other people so that people can know him. Seeking his kingdom is, is seeing what the operations of heaven um, materializing themselves in the earth realm, right? Seeking, seeking the kingdom first is prioritizing God's agenda over our agenda, right? It's waking up and asking God, God, what do you want to do with this day? Um, it's waking up and asking God, uh, who do you want me to call today? Who do you want me to love on today? Who needs to be encouraged today? Um, hey, my sister's on. Oh my gosh, good to see you. I love you. First time seeing you on here. Oh, I love you so much. Um, and uh, and so, so he doesn't want us to be consumed with um, the current events. He doesn't want us to be consumed by politics. He doesn't want us to be consumed by just the drama that's happening around us. He wants us to seek his agenda, seek his itinerary, because he is five steps ahead. He's planned out ways to uh, override all the plans that the enemy is working on and trying to uh, trying to advance you know during this time God God has has alternatives he has uh, he has plan A's he has plan B's he has plan C's he has so many different plans that he wants us to catch and he wants us to hear about so that uh, we can partner with him in bringing them into fruition um, but in order to get them you know we can't be seeking the money that's involved necessarily we have to seek the plans first we have to seek his plans first and trust that he will give all of the provision all the resources all of the connections all the finances for his plans and um and that is the kind of season that we're all in and so just to kind of close God wants us to really 
really know and to have our faith established in the fact that for those that have sought his kingdom, for those that are, are about the Father's business, for those that are uh, interested in, in the things of God and interested in uh, partnering with the Spirit of God to do whatever he wants to do in the earth, that, that the preparations and the resources have been rising. They're rising, they're being, uh, ba- they're about to be baked, they've, they've been kneaded, they've been, you know, pressed, and uh, they are, are rising just as the dough of the pizza rises for 24 hours, for days and days, it can rise. And it's, it's, it's being activated behind the scenes, whether we can see it or not. And so we just have to renew our faith. We have to renew our trust. We have to renew our hope in, in his promises and in um, the work that he's given us all to do. Because each of us has a portion. Each of us has a call. And... Um, and when, we, when we're about the Father's business, there is no lack. And, um, and, and yeah, and that's, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. So again, Matthew 6, give us today our daily bread. Everybody, please pray, pray this prayer. Um, get spiritually fed. Get, get spiritually fed. Get physically fed. Um, because we're entering into a season where there there truly, truly, truly is no lack for the people of God, physically, spiritually, in any area. And so I'm just going to close with a prayer to seal all of this. And um, everybody that's listening, just say, I receive. I receive. Okay. (laughs) So please bow your head and close your eyes with me. So dear Lord Jesus, Father, I thank you, God for this time to convene, this time to just be encouraged, this time to cling on to hope, to cling cling on to you, uh, to, to, to actively put our trust in you, God, knowing that, um, that you've been working, knowing that, that you've been so, so, so active in this season. While the world has been waiting, while the world has been loading, we have been preparing and you have been doing a work double time. You have been doing more than we can even ask, think, or imagine. So, Father, we just praise you for um, the provision. We thank you for the finances that are being hand- handed over to us. We thank you for the wealth transfer that we are a part of, that we are recipients of. We thank you for the, the properties. We thank you for the businesses. We thank you for the relationships. We thank you for the uh, ministries and the communities. We thank you, God, for the farms. We thank you, God, for the gardens. We thank you, God, for everything that we have been asking you for to advance your kingdom. We thank you, God, for handing them over to us at the perfect time. We thank you for the, just your divine timing and we just humble ourselves before you because we can't see all of the chessboard we can't see it but you can and you know exactly how how you know laws are being changed you know exactly how uh, politicians are being removed you know exactly how people are moving between cities you know every single piece of the the playing field. And so, God, we just take this time to trust you, to trust that you know what you're doing, to trust that you have our best interests at heart, to trust that you are working to put us at the top of of this new world that is being established. You are working uh, all things together for our good because you love us and because we are called according to your purpose. So, Father, we just, we just, yeah, Lord, we just praise you, God, and we thank you that um, that all things are work- being worked for our good. And I thank you, God, just for the purpose that has been uh, planted in the lives of every single person that is listening to this. Father, stir us up, ignite us, ignite uh, a fire in us to do your work, to do your will, and to see... Um, see the supernatural break into the natural realm. Father, we just love you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. I pray. Amen. Okay. I receive. Yes. And um, I'm just going to say a prayer for those that have yet to receive Christ or that want to receive Christ again. You know, it doesn't hurt to ever say this prayer more and more. It's basically a prayer of communion. But um, for those that want to accept Christ, please just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for asserting myself above you. 
Lord, I humble myself before you even now in Jesus' name. Um, Lord, cleanse me with your blood. Come into my life and save me from myself. I want to know you. I want to trust you. I want to love you. And I want to behold you. I want to see miracles in my life. Not only my life, but my family's life as well. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, so I, I love everybody. Thank you for getting on, and uh, I'll probably be on next Tuesday at the same time. All right, shalom and be blessed.